The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others, Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. So this is the 174th anniversary of the consecration of this building. So we begin our 175th year and we'll celebrate the living stones, the stones of our faith. Christ is the cornerstone, as we heard in our first reading, and that we are called to imitate him. We are to be living stones as well. So we celebrate the fact that this building has been here for 174 years. We celebrate the fact that God has dwelt here for 174 years and that he came into this building when mass was celebrated here for the very first time. And so when the Eucharist was present, he's here, as we know. And God is all being. As I've said before, God is not a being. He's not the supreme being. He's beingness itself. So anything that exists is supported by God. But in a very special way, in his temple, he is here and we receive him and therefore become like him. And that's the key of our faith. We become living stones, as we heard in the first reading. Living stones that are the witness to Christ, who is the cornerstone of the church. Living stones that are called to take Christ to wherever we find ourselves. Someone said something very profound to me uh, recently. She's, she was a sister of life, and she deals with people who are um, considering an abortion or who have had an abortion with women and, uh, or with women who are in difficulty throughout their pregnancy and to help them. She was talking about women who tended to go back to abusive relationships. And she said, um, I discovered that I could not change their darkness, but I could be a light in their darkness. And that's what we're called to be. That's really what we celebrate in our faith, on any aspect of our faith, but especially when we're celebrating the living stones who have been a light in the darkness throughout the 174 years, the living stones that we are called to be light to darkness wherever we find ourselves each and every day. So to think of the darkness around us, our own society, but even in our own personal lives as well, with illness and death and persecution, we're called to be a light there, living stones 
a true light in the darkness that we find. And so there's a challenge in this anniversary year as we celebrate it, that we become more and more Christ's ambassadors wherever we find ourselves, living stones, ambassadors to him out in the world, beginning with our families, beginning in our homes, beginning then in our parish, and then the ripple effect outward. And so to reflect on that, we're not celebrating the stones of the building. We're celebrating the fact that Christ is the cornerstone on which everything has been built. So we're celebrating him and that we are called to be like him wherever we find ourselves. Let us pray. So we thank you, Father, for the 174 years of living faith, the faith of all of those who have not only built this building, but have worshipped here, worshipped you here, over these past 174 years. We ask you to grant all of them eternal rest, but also to give us a depth of faith that we have not experienced before so that we can be truly you wherever we find ourselves out in the world. For this grace we pray to the Lord. We pray in a special way today for the Holy Father as the Gospel indicate that Peter is the rock on which the church is built. And so for his deepening of his faith, the deepening of the unity of the church, the deepening of the teaching of the faith that Christ has handed on to us, for these graces we pray to the Lord. For each of you, for the intentions which you bring to this Eucharist and that you offer now in the secret of your hearts. For each of you and for your intentions, we pray to the Lord. For all of our sick, all those who have asked for our prayers, all those for whom we promise to pray, that the Lord heal them in all the ways they need to be healed, we pray to the Lord. For the intention for which this Mass is being offered, for Anne Ling's intentions, we pray to the Lord. And for our faithful departed, we pray especially for the repose of the souls of all the deceased members of each of your families, all the repose of the soul of all the deceased members of our parish, and all the deceased religious sisters, religious brothers, and clergy who have served this diocese. That the Lord grant all the faithful departed eternal rest and give his peace and comfort to all who mourn. We pray to the Lord. And we continue to pray for peace. Peace especially in all the war-torn areas of the world, especially in Ukraine. Peace in our own hearts, in our prayer, in our relationship with the Lord. Peace in our homes, our families, our parish. We pray that the peace of Christ reign in the hearts of all. For peace, we pray to the Lord. And this cathedral is consecrated under the title um, to the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin, Mother of God. And so let us turn to her and ask her to take all our intentions before the throne of the Almighty and to intercede for us there. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. 